So we're just going to plug it in. And as you see, when it first starts up, it's in Fahrenheit. If you want to change that quickly before we go mucking around with any other settings of the set button and just keep pressing it till we get to the CF change it to C hold down the set button now every time you do that it will, will reset your settings so that's something to keep in mind. That's why it's a good idea to do it first before you go mucking around. So we'll have a quick look through the other settings. If you just press the set once like that, that's where you can set what temperature you want to be at. This one at the top is what the probe is at the moment. If I hold it, it should go up. It has so when you want to change it you just press it once up and down so we'll set it to what I might usually ferment at say 19 degrees set you can see that the, the Sensor's saying 23.6 and I'm set at 19, so it's on the cooling cycle. Now you'll have power going through your cooling. It's what you'd have your fridge plugged into, of course. So we'll have a quick look at the other settings. Hold it down. That's your temperature. What you want to ferment at. Press it again. Now this is your high differential. So once, since it's set to 19, once it gets over 21, it'll start cooling. I like mine a bit lower. Some people put it 0.5 degrees, I put mine at 0.3. So once it gets to 19.3, the cooling will kick on. Now this is the cold differential, and it's the same thing. Once it gets to 18 point, if I set it 2.3, once it gets to 18.7, the heating will kick on. The next one is your alarm. This is your alarm high. It's set to 100 degrees at the moment. This will take a little while, I'll skip through this. Now I will set my alarm high to say 23. So now if something goes wrong and the heater kicks on and it's not cutting off and it gets up to 23 degrees, an alarm will go off. I'll show you that in a second. And this is the same again, but for the low temperature. Skip through this again. I'll set my alarm low to something like 15 degrees. If something goes wrong with the fridge and it gets down to 15 degrees, or something goes wrong with the heater and the heater's not working and it gets down to 15 degrees, an alarm will go off. The next setting is your compressor delay. So when it hits into goes into cooling. Or the, and it's right on a temperature, it might click on and click off and try and get the fridge to click on and click off too fast and it can ruin your compressor. So this just gives a delay. So once it goes into the cooling cycle, there'll be a delay of three minutes before it actually turns on the cooling or turns on the refrigerator. Next setting is the CA, that's your calibration. If you find that it's wrong and you should, probably should calibrate it at the start by just testing it against one of your thermometers you usually use, uh, you can adjust it up or down here, uh, so it fits in and is calibrated. And the other one is a Celsius Fahrenheit change. And we're back 
to the initial set temperature. Now remember to hold it down and set it. A lot of the settings won't change or, or save the change unless you press the set button. Now I can quickly show you the alarms. If I grab the temperature sender, sensor and we'll heat it up. It went over 23, the alarm goes off. If I just place it in some cold water here. If I just place the sensor in some cold water, heating's kicked in. The water might not be cold enough. There we go. So we'll have a quick look at the Wi Fi. So if you go into Play Store, you search for Inkbird's, Inkbird Smart is what it's called. So there, you can install it that way. Or if you've got the instruction book and you have a QR reader, should be able to use the QR reader like that press OK I'll just take your Inkbird app mine's on Android and it takes you to where you want to be and install it Once installed, of course, open. You need to register. I've actually already got an account. So we'll just go back. I can log in with my account. I've still got to agree. Once you've registered, add device. There's the ITC 308 Wi Fi. Confirm it's blinking, it is blinking. That's the Wi Fi symbol, it hasn't, not next to the power button like displayed there. That's my Wi Fi. I'll put in my password. Confirm. It says make sure your router and mobile device are as close as possible. This takes a minute or so. Now this, the first time I set it up on my phone, it had the same problem, it said failed to add device. Now I tried again and it didn't work either. But if I go back to my page, it's there. So it actually did add the device, even though it says it, it didn't. You can then click on it. And we're connected. 20.6, 20.6. That's your actual temp, and that's what we're set at. 19. That's why the cooling light is on. You can change everything from here. You change what your setting is, what you want it to be set at here. 
I'll change it to 20. Now the ink bird's set to 20. And you don't have to be at home. As long as your router is still connected to the ink bird and you're connected via the internet or your, your telephone to anywhere, you should be right. Now you can change all the settings. And there's a good way to remember what they actually are with a good explanation. Um, they're worded a bit better there, not just a couple of letters. So if we change the high temperature value here to say 25, you'll see on the ink bird, if we go through, oops, wrong one, 25. Now, I'll just pretend my phone's off. Get the temperature sensor. The alarm there. And I get a message. There's a message saying my high temperature alarm has gone off. So that's about all I use it for. It does have smart home connectivity. So if you have Google Home or a few other devices, it can be controlled by your voice. Let's say Google Assistant, sorry, Alexa. And I'm not sure what that one is. I don't use those things. But I'll leave a link below. Staz, I think, connects his through his uh, one of those Google Assistant and you can just talk and set it through your voice so that's about it I'll set this back to 19 to what I usually ferment at if you'd like to know any more the instructions are quite informative more info than you usually get with these sort of devices this ink bird was sent to me for review and I'll leave a link below to where you can buy them on eBay. Cheers.